Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we have what many of us have been waiting for a long time. Ubuntu 17.10 is released. Uh, you know, I've been working with the beta for the past few weeks. The amount of work that has been done to create this uh, release, unbelievable. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, really awesome release. They have done some phenomenal work here. Definitely worth checking out. You know, we probably have not seen this many changes in Ubuntu for, you know, maybe since 10.10, uh, whenever it was that the the Unity desktop came out. Um, so, you know, for those of you that have not been keeping track of things, uh, you know, Ubuntu is now back on the GNOME desktop, uh, the GNOME shell. The Unity desktop is no more now. It is available for those of you that want to continue using it. You'll have to install some packages to get there, but uh, it is available for those that want to. But the main desktop is now the GNOME desktop, and as a longtime fan of GNOME Shell, I'm really happy with what they have done here. So um, I think rather than just keep talking about it, let's go to the desktop and uh, we'll get this show on the road. So let's start out by doing a walkthrough of the desktop. So over on the left hand side right along here you can see that we have a dock of sorts and uh, there's a lot more to talk about on the dock so I'll kind of come back to that later. Uh, but you've got, our, you've got the dock right here, you've got this activities button up in the top which by clicking that you can, uh, you can activate the search and a few other things that you can do with the activities button. Um, right next to that you will see the uh, whatever application you are currently using that's what is going to uh, the title is going to appear right here. So now right now you can't really see the simple screen recorder just because I've got dual monitor set up and and I've got that application over on another uh, on my other display. But whatever application you are you are currently using, that's what's going to be listed right here. And if you see, you got the little down arrow button. If you wanted to, you could quit it from here. And then, depending on the application, sometimes you'll have other options, uh, other things that you can do. Maybe open another instance of that particular application, that sort of thing. So we've got that in the center. We've got our date and time. And if you click on it. You'll see you get a calendar, and this is also where your notifications will appear. And if you go and sync the GNOME uh, weather application uh, to your desktop, uh, you will get uh, a weather report down here just below the calendar itself. So um, that's one of the features I really, really like about, uh, about GNOME is that, you know, you go and click it there, and boom, all that kind of extra notification type of information it's right there you got the notifications you got the calendar you got the weather all that kind of stuff right there in one spot and then over on the right hand side um, any of your what what a lot of people will call legacy tray icons uh, they will show up here so like I've got I'm synced with Dropbox right now your Dropbox icon is going to show up here uh, some other applications, they've got little icons that uh, that'll show up in the top bar. They're going to be over in here. And then next to that, kind of a combination uh, indicator, I guess you could call it. If you click on this right here, you've got your volume and uh, for both the uh, your speakers and for your microphone, internet connections, VPN if you have a VPN configured and then user configurations and from here you can you got quick links to uh, to get to your settings to lock the desktop and to power off the unit so now that we kind of walk through that real quick let me talk a little bit more about the dock now not too long ago I did a a overview of how to effectively use the GNOME desktop and I will leave a link to that video down below so that you can go through that if, if you're not familiar with the GNOME desktop because there are some things that are different and uh, I think by watching the video if you're not familiar with the, the GNOME desktop it will make your workflow much more efficient. 
the GNOME desktop is not a what you would consider a traditional desktop. The workflow is is different. You can use it as a traditional desktop, but uh, uh, I think using it the way that the developers intended, planned, whatever you want to call it, uh, you will be more efficient. Anyway, kind of getting back to the dock and, and, and activities and all that kind of stuff. So on the dock, if you see a little dot next to the application, it's because that application is open. Now, everything that is that is shown on the dock is going to be something that is listed in your favorites. And if you want to open an application, you can just click on it from here. So like Firefox there, we click on it, boom, Firefox opened up. And you can see now we got a little dot that is right next to it because it's open. And um, tell you what, just so that I can demonstrate this, let me drag over. There's Audacity, my audio recorder, which I'm running, and then Simple Screen Recorder, which I'm running to do the screen recording here. Now, if you go and either click on the Activities button or hit your Windows slash Super key, uh, you will see that you miniaturize all of these, and you can either use the mouse to hover over one and pick that particular application, and it'll put that one on top. So you can do that with your mouse. or you can go and you can hit the um, the the Windows key and then just tab through them if you like. You can also go and hold the Windows key down and then tab this way and move through the, the various applications. Now, uh, stuff that is not in your dock. If you want to open up an application that's not in your dock, well, there's a couple of routes that you can go. You can do the Windows key and then just do a search. So, like, um, I don't know, LibreOffice. You know, you start typing and boom, it starts searching for you. So, you can do that. Or from the dock, you can come down and hit the, hit the show applications button right here. And boom, it'll pop up these. Now, right now, it's set at the frequent, but if you want to look at everything that's installed on your system, just click on the all, and now, boom, it shows you all of these. And you can either use your mouse scroll wheel to move on to, like, the next page, or you can use the, you know, click on the little dots over here to move around, take a look at, uh, you know, all the different applications that you've got installed. So... For those of you that have been using previous versions of Ubuntu and were using Unity, uh, there are some differences as far as workflow goes. It's going to behave a little bit differently. Um, now, I, I, I will admit my bias right now. I am a huge fan of the way that the GNOME desktop works. And uh, to me, it is more efficient than the, uh, the, the old Unity way. But I do realize that uh, for somebody that's been using Unity for a long time, this is going to be a change and uh, probably take you a little bit of time to get used to the new workflow. As far as uh, as GNOME goes and the GNOME software, GNOME Shell, all that kind of stuff, we are running GNOME 3.26 here. And uh, that is the most recent release of GNOME. And for those of you that have been keeping track, this is uh, kind of unusual. We haven't seen in a while where the latest Ubuntu release is using the latest, uh, the latest GNOME shell, GNOME stack, all that kind of stuff. Uh, usually, really, it's just, it's just a matter of timing. And, uh, you know, when, when the GNOME release comes out, generally there's not enough time to get ready to be able to use the latest, uh, the latest GNOME, uh, uh, software by the time the, you know, the latest uh, Ubuntu comes out. But uh, timing just seemed to work out this time. Whether this is going to continue or not, I don't know. But uh, for a lot of Ubuntu users, that's going to make them happy that they're able to use the latest of the GNOME software. While we're talking about software, um, we pretty much have the same software that we've seen in the previous few versions of, of Ubuntu. So, um, you know, Firefox, Rhythmbox, uh, all those, all those applications that you've seen before, we've still got them. You know, we are on a newer release of that particular piece of software. Generally, uh, maybe not the absolute latest, but, uh, uh, 
very close. Uh, some of the on some of the applications, it is the most the most recent or uh, or the most recent stable release. So we're we're much newer on the software uh, on that end. Kernel in in this release, we're on the 4.13 kernel, so fairly new kernel. Um, so for those of you that have uh, newer hardware. You'll definitely be able to uh, to be able to use that for for myself. You know, I recently bought a Dell Inspiron laptop, and it's one of the two in ones. When I was using a previous version of Ubuntu, I had to upgrade the kernel to be able to get the screen to automatically flip in that when you know when I folded it into a tablet mode and and tent mode and all that kind of stuff. In the case of uh, of Ubuntu 17.10, I I installed it and right out of the box, everything worked with the screen rotation and the, the touch screen and all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, if you if you've got a newer piece of hardware, um, you will definitely benefit from the newer kernel. One of the big changes in this release is the system settings. They have really really improved the UI. Of the uh, of the system settings, really happy with what they've done there. Uh, let me go and we'll just open that up and we'll take a walk through it. Let me drag it over here. Okay, so you can see for those of you that remember system settings over the previous you know few releases, you know this looks nothing like the old system settings. You know, you just select whatever it is that you want to tweak, and uh, they're listed over on this side and. I'll tell you what, we'll just do a, a quick walkthrough here. Wi-Fi, you're going to be able to play around with your Wi-Fi settings here. In my case, uh, my desktop, I do not have um, a Wi-Fi adapter. I'm, I'm wired connection only, uh, and that's the way I like to keep it on this thing. But anyway, this is where you'd have those settings. Bluetooth settings there. Uh, if you want to go and change your background, you could do that through here. And here you can see all the... Uh, uh, these are the pre-installed wallpapers. If you want to grab something from your pictures folder, do a solid color, you can do that and make those changes from there. Same thing with the lock screen. Got a few tweaks that you can do with the dock. Not a whole lot, but a few things. You can see you can change the icon size. Play around with that. Um, which monitors you want to have it show on. So if you're like me running multiple monitors, you can have it on one or the other, or actually both if you'd like. Where do you want it on the screen, left, right, or the bottom? And then do you want the dock to auto-hide? Basically what the auto-hide does is if you have something that, uh, um, a application that is maximized, it'll get out of the way. Or even if it's not maximized, if you, as you drag towards the edge of the screen, it'll it'll hide for you. Me, I really do not use the dock. Uh, I mainly search thing, you know, do the, do the, uh, uh, you know, hit the windows key and do a, a keyboard search. Or if it's applications that are already open, then I will do the windows and tab kind of thing. So the dock is something that I really just want it out of the way. So the auto hide is, is pretty much the, the route that I would go. Notifications. Uh, here's where you can where you can go and turn on and off notica notifications from various uh, applications that are on your desktop. Same thing with the search here. Set up your uh, languages, add, change, all that kind of stuff. Universal access. So here, if you need large text, high contrast, turn on the zoom sound when you're typing on various keys, that sort of thing. Online accounts. I have not synced any online accounts on on my uh, desktop here. Or, uh, yeah, my main, uh, my main desktop. But on my laptop, I did go and sync a few accounts. Had no issues there, so that all seems to be working just fine. Privacy settings here. Sharing settings. Sound. So if you need, if you've got multiple audio devices, you know, headphones, mic, all that kind of stuff, you can go and 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 set that up there. You know, what's your default and and so on and so forth. 
power settings, uh, network settings. So uh, you can see I'm just on a wired connection here. Um, if you want to set up a VPN, you could go and set that up through here. Same thing with network proxy. Under devices, here's where you're going to find uh, printer settings, keyboard settings, mouse, uh, display, removable media, all that kind of stuff. Um, while we're talking about printers, uh, what was it, last release, two releases ago, I can't remember exactly, but they set up uh, so that uh, uh, drivers will be automatically installed for certain printers. And I found out my, uh, my office jet, it's one that that works with. I mean, I installed, I installed uh, Ubuntu 1710. First time I fired it up, I fired up the the desktop after the installation. You know, I got a notification that the uh, the drivers for the uh, printer had been had been installed and it was ready to go. There was no setting up the printer. It was just you know right out of the box, ready to go. So very happy about that. I know that. Uh, you know, printing has traditionally been something that uh, uh, has been a, a bit of a pain in, in the Linux world. And I'm glad to see that we're getting to the point that, uh, at least on newer hardware, it's not really an issue. So uh, under keyboard here, you are going to find all of your keyboard shortcuts. So if you need a cheat sheet so that you can learn... Uh, you know, learn your way around the uh, the GNOME desktop and while using keyboard shortcuts, good place to go and look here. You can go and change the shortcuts here as well. Personally, uh, I, you know, I just learned the, uh, the default ones and a lot of people don't really use shortcuts. Um, but if you are a shortcut kind of person, GNOME desktop is going to be great for you because there's practically a shortcut for everything anyway moving on uh, mouse and touchpad settings display settings uh, this dialog here has been changed from previous versions really like the way that they that they got it set up um, you can go you know maneuver how which which uh, which display you want on the left which on the right that sort of thing which is your primary um, do you want you know how do you want it uh, oriented, the resolution, uh, do you want the night light on and off, all that kind of stuff. Do you want to mirror the displays? Do you want a single display? You know, how do you want it set up? Removable media, you know, how do you want that to do? You know, do you want it to, uh, you know, in the case of the audio CD, do you want it to automatically open rhythm box when you stick that CV CD in there? DVD, do you want it to automatically open the video player? That, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't have a tablet set up, so uh, really can't show you anything there. Uh, if you want to color calibrate your monitors, you can do that from here. And, oh, still got details to look at. So on this About page, it'll tell you a little bit about your system, your device name, uh, how much memory is available, the processor you're using, the graphics you're using. Uh, you can see we're under GNOME 3.26.1. Uh, 64 bit and uh, the disk space and uh, what I what I've come to realize on this is what you're seeing under disk space is what is available in your root partition uh, for those of you that have that have multiple partitions so if you have a separate partition for both root and home it's just going to show you the available space that is on the uh, that is on the root right in here because I know I've got a lot more on the home folder. And that pretty much covers the system settings. Like I said, most of the set the settings were there before. I just think that the UI has is very much improved, uh, much more organized now. One of the new things that we have going on with this release is Wayland. Now, if you're not understanding what Wayland is or you you know you're like what is that? Okay, the Wayland is the new generation display server. For years now, not only Ubuntu and a lot and lot of distributions. In fact, pretty much Linux across the board has been using the X server as its display server. Now, Wayland, like I said, is the next generation, and 
if your hardware is compatible, Wayland will be installed on your system. And and I'll throw a little screenshot of the login screen up, and you can see that uh, when you're logging in, you'll have a choice of either logging in with Xorg or the standard login, which is under Wayland. Now, currently, I am under Xorg because one of the things that does not work under uh, under Wayland is the uh, is uh, most of the screen recorders. Uh, simple screen recorder, which is what I've been using for years to record my videos, does not work because it interfaces with X11. If you're not if you're not using the X X screen server, <laughs> you're not. Uh, uh, you're not going to be recording anything. Basically, all you record with simple screen recorder under Wayland is a blank desktop. Um, now, there is a screen recorder out there. I think it's called the Green Green Recorder or something similar. I was reading about it just recently. Um, I have not had a chance to download it and test it out, but it is touted as being able as being the first. Recording, uh, desktop recording app that does work under Wayland. So I'm hoping to get that downloaded in the next week or so and give it a try out, uh, see how it works and whatnot. So besides the screen recording issue, the only other issue that I have run into on Wayland is a few applications that need root access. And that would be um, like Synaptic Package Manager, um, G parted some of those they will not open now uh, I'll have a video coming up uh, next week or so showing how to uh, a workaround for that and my guess is is moving forward probably by the time we get to say Ubuntu 1804 hopefully they will have implemented a a fix for that or maybe something will be implemented in uh, in the applications so that they play nice with Wayland um, because I mean, let's just be honest. Wayland is pretty much going to be the future, I think, for all the Linux distributions. Running, other than the issues that I pointed out, running Wayland, at least on my desktop, and this is both on my on my main desktop machine and my laptop. Wayland has been great. There is no screen tearing, none, zero. No matter what application you're running. No matter how much load the computer is running under, there is no screen tearing. Uh, everything is snappy. Uh, animations work great. And it, it is such a step up from uh, the X, X uh, server that, uh, I mean, at least for me, I think there's no comparison. So once those bugs are ironed out with some of the applications um, that... that uh, aren't playing nice with Wayland. I think, um, you know, Wayland is definitely the way to go. Performance wise, everything has been great for me in this release. You know, I started out with, uh, with one of the early betas and, and there were some bugs, but I have watched as, as we've gotten closer and closer to the release date and the bugs, I mean, they've just been squashing bugs like you wouldn't believe. So, uh, you know, Whatever you want to say about the Ubuntu developers, I got to give them two thumbs up for the work that they've done on on bug killing. Pretty much every issue that I have managed to find has been fixed. And uh, you know, here I'm recording this a few hours before the official release. You know, there, there's probably not going to be any more updates that come down the pike uh, bef bef between now and and a couple hours from now when they put out the official release. Almost every bug that I have been able to find, or at least every one that I've found, uh, has been fixed. And and now that we're at the, uh, you know, this close to final release, I am not finding any problems. Now, having said that, let's talk about the stuff that I don't like. And, and how do I want to say this? Um, it is not issues. It is the way things have been set up. It is the way that things have been designed, that sort of thing. Uh, some choices that they have made that uh, I'm I'm not particularly a fan of. And let me start with one of my biggest pet peeves on Ubuntu in the past few releases, and that is the theming. 
Jeez, when are you people going to update the theming? We have been using the same theme for how long now? Um, and I realized they went in and, yeah, they tweaked it a little bit so it plays nice with the GNOME desktop. But, I mean, really, we have the same look that we have had for, for what, at least since 2012, 2010? I mean, how far back do we need to go? Um, I mean, really, I think that we're, we're pretty much got the same look ever since Unity started. Um, yeah. And the thing is, is not that it, there are plenty of other uh, uh, themes available out there. So just, you know, as a quick example, I downloaded a, a uh, pop theme which is what the people over at System76 are working on, and uh, which I believe is what is going on there on their computers now. Let me just open up the tweak tool, and let me pull it over here. So you can see under appearance, uh, theming is the default ambience right now. Let's switch it over. You can go to the pop theme, which is right like that. You could even go to, they've got a dark version of it. Pop ETA, a slim version of it, slim dark. I'll just go back to the just the standard pop. But to me, it, that looks a whole lot better. Go down to icons and go to, I installed the pop icons as well. Um, you know, it's, those are the same sort of icons you had before, but a much more modern take. And to me, that just looks so much better. And, you know, I know that, uh, you know, the appearance isn't everything. But uh, at the same time, I like a desktop that looks nice. I, Especially when there are other options available. Why is it that uh, they can't improve on the look of uh, default Ubuntu? It just kind of blows my mind. And, you know, it took me you know, five minutes to go and install those other themes. Gee, I mean, you know, just to the people at Canonical, you do not have to be the maintainer of every single thing that you install on Ubuntu. You know, you guys could go and say, hey, the people over at uh, System76, they got a nice theme. Let's go and uh, we'll use that. Or, you know, there's a bunch of other themes out there that are really nice looking um, and you could still get a you know close to uh close to what uh the ambience look was but a uh, more modern take on it and like i said this is just this this appearance thing it's one of my pet peeves um just because i i i think part of it is i've never liked their their theming I, and i you know i say the same thing about uh, linux mint i do not like their choice of, choice of theming over there as well uh, this is much more to my taste. If you are a person who is familiar with the GNOME desktop, you know, maybe you're coming from Ubuntu GNOME, you are coming from some other distribution, you may be unhappy with the regular Ubuntu, at least as uh, as we see here in the default mode. And the reason being is extensions. I know a lot of people uh, who are fans of the known desktop they install a bunch of extensions uh, just so they can customize the gnome desktop the way that they want it uh, however as implemented with what we see here you are stuck with the way that ubuntu has set it up now on one hand i can understand it uh, if somebody is new to the gnome desktop um you know, the, the whole extensions thing, it could be overwhelming for them. Okay, I can kind of get that. They were trying for an easy transition from the Unity desktop to, to GNOME. Okay, I can, I can get that as well. At the same time, for those who are um, familiar with the GNOME desktop, you're going to be somewhat frustrated with the way that things are set up here. Now, there are, I don't even know if you want to call it a workaround, but a little extra work that you need to do so that you can be able to do that. Let's uh, let me open up Synaptic Package Manager so you can take a look at what we got going on here. I'll show you what you need to do. So 
if you go into Synaptic Package Manager, you can do a search for GNOME-Session. Okay, so if you go to this one right here, GNOME-Session, and install this, basically what this gives you is it's a little more upstream GNOME. It is um, it doesn't have all of the Ubuntu uh, created tweaks and changes and that kind of stuff. So you may want to go and install that. When you go and go to the login, uh, go to login at uh, um, on GDM, um, if you go and click on that little gear icon, it'll give you an option for uh, the GNOME session. That's That's a route that you could go. Um, another thing is that you could go and let me go and pull it up here. I think it's gnome-shell. Find it here. Yeah, right here. Gnome-shell-extensions. That's essentially, uh, this may sound like doublespeak, but this is the shell extension that you need so that you can install an extensions. Uh -huh. Say that five times fast. So anyway, um, install this and you will be able to install and use other extensions. Uh, and you can see looking here in Synaptic, there are quite a few that are available right through the, uh, you know, right through the Ubuntu repository. So you don't necessarily have to go to the GNOME extensions page online and, you know, go through Firefox and all that. You know, there's a lot of them that are, you know, available right here but this kind of brings up another thing is that they do not install by default the gnome tweak tool why i don't know the and, and, and like I, said, I and i said it before i like a nice looking desktop i like to customize it the way that i want why they are not installing this uh this tool by default i don't know i installed it and with the GNOME Tweak tool, or now it's just simply referred to as Tweaks, but you, that's where you can go and install the other themes, tweak the stuff on your desktop. So if you're like me and don't want to show any icons at all, you can go and do that. What extensions you have installed, uh, which ones that you want activated, all the settings for those, change your fonts, keyboard and mouse settings, power setting, you know, just all kinds of different stuff you can tweak from right here why that is not installed by default i have i have no idea um and i guess that you know on one hand i guess they are trying for you know for those people once again that are unfamiliar with gnome shell um you know trying to make the transition from unity easier um, i don't know if that's the reasoning i think they kind of fail on that because there's stuff that you could change before in unity that you can't now uh, you know i don't know um because even if i was coming from unity i may want to go and want to change the fonts or the size of the fonts that kind of thing um you know a lot of the stuff that you can do with the tweak tool why it's not installed by default i don't know a little bit of the blame though i think also falls on the the gnome development team um, the known developers upstream because they have decided for whatever reason that all those settings that are in that tweak tool do not need to be in included in the system settings, which I consider to be BS. I think that all of that stuff should be in, uh, included in your regular system settings. Now, if you want to make a, you know, if you don't want to make it so that uh, everybody can you know, to kind of get it out of the way or you don't want everybody to be able to access it or whatever your reasoning is, you could go and make a, you know, an advanced sec section. Um, you know, you click on advanced, you got to put in a password so that you can access it. But really the stuff that you're tweaking right there, the theming and that kind of thing, I don't see why that would be a big deal. Um, but uh, most of those settings, uh, really all of those settings as far as I'm concerned, they should be included in the regular system settings and why GNOME developers have not done that. I don't know it, you know, as big of a fan as I am of the GNOME desktop, 
that is one of the things that does kind of irritate me uh, that you cannot easily access a lot of settings, things that I think everybody should be able to. So after all that complaining, you probably think, hey, he hated this release. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Um, you know, I think this is a phenomenal release. Um, they the, the developers have done a huge amount of work in a relatively short amount of time. Um, really like what I've seen here. It's just that there's a few things that um, that uh, I didn't like, and really a lot of it comes down to my personal preferences as opposed to uh, um, something that didn't work or that sort of thing. So really, the stuff that uh, that I have moaned and groaned about it really they aren't that big a deal. So having said all that, uh, the question probably comes down to, uh, for those who are on older versions of Ubuntu, should you upgrade? It depends. If you are on 1704, I would definitely upgrade. Just because for, for one, 1704, it's an interim release, just like 1710 is. It's only supported for nine months. Definitely upgrade to 1710. If you, if you are on 1704, you're using, and you're using the, uh, the Unity desktop. And you, if you don't want to go and switch to GNOME, there, there's kind of two routes you could do. One is you could go and reinstall, uh, 1604 so that you have a, a LTS. It'll get you, it'll get you through until the next LTS comes out or, uh, you could go and install 17.10 and you can actually install uh, the Unity package. You'll have, to, uh, you'll have to go and install that yourself. You'll have to go and uh, during your login session, go and log in under Unity. But yes, you can go and install Unity. How long Unity is going to be supported, I don't know. Um, you know, at the very least... Uh, since 16.04 had Unity and it's a, and that is a long-term support release. It's going to be until 2021. Um, so, you know, five years from, from the time that 16.04 came out. So um, <clears throat> you at least got a little while or, or a few years on, uh, on Unity. If you are on Ubuntu 16.04, unless you want all the new stuff, unless you want to go and and switch over to uh, the GNOME desktop right now. I don't see a reason for you to uh, uh, to make the switch. There was nothing wrong with Ubuntu 16.04. It is a great release. Um, if you're wanting to stay with the Ubuntu Unity, there's really no reason for you to change unless there's you know some hardware incompatibility or you need uh, you know there's something that it's not providing that that you need. Um, and, and 1604, very stable. It's a good release and whatnot. To me, you know, this release 1710, it can be thought of as, I guess, like a beta for Ubuntu 1804. Um, like I said, they, they've ironed out most of the, uh, most of the issues that we found, uh, from when the first alpha came out until now. Um, there may be other issues that I'm just not seeing or whatnot. Um, they will probably get those ironed out and ready to and, and all fixed and ready to go um, before the 1804 release comes out. And if this is any this if this release is any indication, 1804 is going to be a great release as well. So um, uh, you know, I kind of look forward to seeing seeing how we move between now and then. If they would just fix that theming, <laughs> because like I said, it's been a it's to me, that's been an issue for a while. Um, another question that is probably going to come up, and I will I will throw it out there right now: Is this a good release for a new user? Re- regular Ubuntu is probably not the best Linux distribution to start somebody out on. I think that um, both Linux Mint and and uh, Ubuntu Mate, I think both of those are better for uh, for new users you know i think you know i was recently watching uh, joe collins his channel and uh when he was talking about what about distros that are good for new users he had made the comment that uh 
uh, regular Ubuntu is almost like a house that's unfinished. And I, and I think that's kind of a good analogy. It's like, uh, you know, you, you're having a new house built and uh, you move in and they haven't put the trim on yet. You know, the, the bulk of the work is done, but there's this little one, two, three percent that still needs to be done that if you are a new user, it, it can be, you know, kind of kind of aggravating, you know, um, installing additional proprietary codecs. And, and uh, if you're, you know, now that we're on the GNOME desktop, you know, if you want to use GNOME extensions and uh, adding the tweak tool and all that kind of stuff. To me, I think that uh, that both Ubuntu Mate and also Linux Mint are more complete and ready to go right out of the box for a new user. Well, I think that pretty much finishes this video up. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check up on, uh, as, as I get release more videos, I will definitely be having a review of Ubuntu Mate. I'm hoping to get towards to working on that this afternoon, maybe tomorrow, so it'll probably be released in the next couple of days. I'm going to have a follow-up for the new users on the uh, on the Ubuntu desktop, um, you know, kind of things that you're going to want to do right after installing, get yourself ready if this is the first time that you are on Ubuntu, things like that. Um, so definitely check those out. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. And please share this video with all your friends and whatnot. And uh, I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.